Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Speed Chess Championship quarterfinals. Uh, it is the match Hikaru Nakamura versus Levon Aronyan. You can see that Hikaru is rated 29.09, which is absolutely incredible. And uh, that of course means that he's playing uh, <laughs> incredibly well. Uh, but it's not just that he plays uh, speed chess well, he also plays classical chess well. So he's, uh, he, he's a very well-rounded uh, player in any time format, but so is Levon. So this should be an excellent match. Uh, let's check out one of the games and then we are going to discuss what happened in the match this is game seven it is the most requested one so uh, i'm showing this one first sorry about the c on the bird sometimes uh, i do change it but i uh, forget to actually update the interface so give me just a few seconds there we go uh, so it doesn't get confusing as this is a speech chess championship and this is from the 5 plus 1 section. Like we say in every video when we are covering this, it's an uh, hour and a half of 5 plus 1, then 60 minutes of 3 plus 1, and then 30 minutes of 1 plus 1, uh, the so-called slow bullet. And uh, now let's check out the game. It's quite a nice one and you will very quickly uh, see why. We have pawn to d4 by Hikaru, d5 by Levon, knight to f3, knight to f6, and now pawn to e3, the so-called call system. c5 by Levon and now d captures on c5. We have e6 and now pawn to a3. So still not doing anything with your c pawn. Bishop captures on c5. We have knight b to d2 and now uh, Levon castles. And Hikaru lunges forward with pawn to b4 attacks the bishop here and uh, he might have some ideas of putting his own dark square bishop on this long diagonal so here we have bishop to e7 and now uh, there is the game where bishop to b2 was played but here he carl strikes with pawn to c4 and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game so what does Lavon do well hikaru has uh, this beautiful expansion on the queen side of course he will try to undermine it pawn to a5 we have b5 by hikaru and b b6 now and already you can see with this structure if uh, you can ever uh, get something like c5 captures then already you get a nice passed b pawn so here bishop to b2 we have bishop to b7 and bishop to e2 hikaru now ready to castle we have knight b to d7 and uh, hikaru castles we have rook to c8 rook to c1 both players putting uh, rooks on the most probable file to open up uh, fairly quickly and now rook to c5 levon uh, tries to uh, tries to lift his rooks and also he wants to clear the path for the queen he wants to bring the queen over to a8 to, a8 to put pressure on this g2 pawn and um, the problem is if you go for c captures on d5 then you can play bishop captures on d5 and if rook captures then levon could capture with the bishop or with the knight and then well this uh, d does not look all that great for hikaru with the bishop pair so uh, excellently placed so after rook to c5 we have a4 hikaru just uh, uh, strengthens his b5 pawn and now, okay, maybe you can capture. Levon goes back, rook to c7, and now knight to d4. Uh, we have knight to c5 with the pawn advanced to a4. Uh, Levon figures uh, now it's a target. He's going to put his knight to c5, and the queen is now stuck guarding that a4 pawn. So knight 2 to f3. D captures on c4. Finally, we have a capture, and now knight to e5. You uh, you can always capture on c4, so uh, no, no point in rushing that. But what Hikaru really wants is put a knight on that c6 square. And okay, queen to a8, now putting pressure on the g2 pawn, and knight knight d to c6 and uh, sorry knight um d to c6 and this is now uh, uh, an excellent piece here it's very hard to dislodge it you can capture once but you don't really gain anything with that so here uh, levon goes for knight to d5 uh, we have rook captures on c4 and now pawn to f6, chasing away the knight from this beautiful central square. Also, you kind of uh, diminish the power of this bishop as now it's not attacking g7 anymore. And here you probably are thinking of two things, moving the knight, something like knight to f3, and also you are considering knight captures on e7. And knight captures on e7 is very interesting because after you capture this with check, uh, how does black continue? Let's say you play knight captures on e7, there's this very nasty queen to d6 move, attacking the rook and the pawn on b6. And after black plays knight d5, defending the rook, the uh, the pawn here, now you will play rook captures on c5. And after b captures, queen captures on e6, as you have removed the defender of the e6 pawn, king h8, and now knight to c4. You have this beautiful passed b pawn, and you have a very nice compensation for the sacrificed exchange. 
Uh, but Hikaru doesn't go for knight captures on e7, nor does he move the knight back. He instead plays bishop to g4, and this is where the uh, fun really begins, because there are so many possibilities here that Levon can play, uh, but he goes for the for the strongest move, and that is to accept Hikaru's challenge. He plays f captures on e5, and okay, now Hikaru goes for rook captures on c5. So he just lost a piece, and now he gives up the exchange. What's the... What's the point of this? Well, the bishop on g4 will at some point pick up the e6 pawn with check and he will win back some material. So here, knight captures on e3 by Levon. And the reason for this is, well, like we said, if b captures on c5, bishop, uh, bishop captures on e6 check, you will pick up that knight on d5. So better grab something, um, uh, you know, instead of just giving, giving it up for nothing. So knight captures on e3. Now the rook is attacked, the queen is attacked, the rook on c5 is attacked, and uh, Hikaru goes for knight captures on e7 with check. Rook captures and now queen to d6, attacking that rook on e7, queen to d8, offering a queen trade, defending the rook, and now bishop captures on e6 with check by Hikaru. King to h8, queen captures on d8, rook captures on d8, and now f captures on e3, leaving um, the rook on c5 to be captured, b captures on c5, and now uh, I was uh, so interested and fascinated by this position because uh, both players have five pawns. He carves sacrifice material. He's down the exchange, but okay, he does have the bishop pair. We always know how strong the bishop pair is. So I took Medo for a walk and I allowed the engine to crunch the numbers. Um, uh, it, it was able to crunch the numbers till depth 46 and or maybe 48. I don't know which, which was it. Uh, but at depth 46 or 48, the engine evaluates this position as 0.00. .00 so that's uh, um, absolutely incredible, and uh, uh, how nicely uh, he Hikaru managed to get some play here. But okay, he has a passed pawn, so does Levon. The passed c pawn is also uh, incredible, and Hikaru plays bishop to c4, which is the absolute strongest idea here. The problem is if you play something like bishop to b3, which maybe makes more sense, uh, then Levon can just sacrifice the c4 pawn to, to activate his rooks. Let's say bishop captures on c4. Rook to c7, and once you move the bishop, rook c uh, is going to go to c8 to, to cover the back rank, and this rook is now coming to d2. So there are many uh, active uh, ideas here for black, but like if you go for rook to f7 after the bishop, rook to d2, sorry, rook to d2 goes after this bishop and also threatens rook captures on g2 with check, and the black would solve all of his problems. And that's why Hikaru finds this absolute uh, brilliant bishop to c4, not allowing Levon to sacrifice the c pawn and activate his rooks, because it's not going to be easy to activate the rooks uh, with, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the bishop pair so active. And notice that you can't activate the rook right away because rook to f8 will be checkmate. So here, pawn to h6 first by Levon, now getting rid of any checkmating ideas, and now bishop to c3. And now Hikaru covers d1, uh, d2, d4, d3, d5, uh, everything in his half of the, uh, the board is covered. So you don't have to worry about Levon using the d file for his rooks. And if you can't use the open file, then the rooks aren't all that great. So bishop to e4, now Levon wants to exchange uh, the light square bishop, uh, uh, which will be very good for him and now rook to c1 by Hikaru. Uh, interestingly, you cannot, you can't really go after the a5 pawn because if bishop captures an a5, rook a8, and then the bishop has to move, you lose the a4 pawn, so you don't really gain anything. Rook to c1. Now Hikaru is trying to get Levon to go for this um, bishop to d3 idea, but if you play bishop to d3 now, then bishop captures an a5 is is very strong because now if bishop captures on c4. Uh, you will uh, already have the a4 pawn defended, and if you go for rook to a8, then, uh, you, uh, well, you can go rook to a8, attack this bishop, but then just bishop to b6. And now, uh, again, what can you play here? If bishop captures on c4, you're going to play rook captures on c4. The pawn is defended. If you capture the, the pawn on a4, then bishop captures on d3, or bishop is undefended. So this would be... Uh, very, very good for Hikaru. So that's why this uh, a rook to c1 move is very, very tricky. So Levon goes for rook e to d7. He wants to trade rooks with rook to d1 check, and Hikaru doesn't allow it. Bishop back to e2, now controlling the d1 square with the bishop and his rook. King to h7. Levon starts bringing the king into the game. Now pawn to h4, grabbing more space on the king side. Pawn to c4. Finally, Levon finds a way to get rid of that pawn. 
uh, as Hikaru had to move the bishop and then he will use the c file for his rooks but Hikaru not interested in that pawn uh, instead he goes for pawn to h5 and notice that Hikaru can capture on e5 on a5 and on c4 but Hikaru doesn't uh, uh, want any pawns he just plays h5 he grabs more space on the king side limits the movement of the black king uh, and now bishop to d3 uh, Hikaru declines the trade, bishop f3, and now Lavon should go for pawn to e4, but instead he goes for rook to f7, and this is where things start to get really, really interesting, and uh, especially for uh, for Hikaru, as Lavon is much, much lower on time. Uh, bishop captures on e5 by Hikaru, we have rook to e8 now going after the bishop, and bishop to d4. So why has Lavon sacrificed a piece here? Uh, it's uh, it's very, very deep indeed. Pawn to g5, and now h captures on g5 by Hikaru. As this is a blitz game, I will briefly mention that bishop to d5 is winning here for Hikaru, but it's such a... Uh, funky line that you don't expect anyone to play this uh, in, in uh, rapid time format, uh, in blitz time format, for example, rook to f8, b6 now, and after rook to b8, defending the pawn, now you capture on c4, and after bishop captures on c4, rook captures on c4, uh, you are... Uh, well, you are up two pawns, but uh, also how is the, the rook to stop this pass pawn if rook beat the c8, for example, uh, you want to you want to trade off that rook rook to c7 check and now if rook captures on c7 b captures on c7 there's just no way to stop this bishop b6 bishop captures on a5 is coming you're going to win one more pawn and then it's just too too many pawns if king j8 you're going to play bishop b6 and even this is impossible because just bishop captures and then you can't capture because of uh, c pawn queening so instead after g5 he played h captures on g6 au passant king captures on g6 and king to f2 now we have h5 by Levon and now king to g3 uh, and here uh, with, with bishop to e4 it's still a very uh, equal game for example bishop to e4 can be met with rook captures on c4 but then there's the tricky h4 move for Levon and you kind of get that white king into the corner you can now trade everything bishop captures pawn captures rook captures and you have the two rooks the king uh, it's not going to be uh, easy dodging everything with for that white king but still white is up two pawns it's still anyone's game and after king to g3 instead king to g5 by Levon and now rook to h1 and this is the only move that gives Hikaru the advantage uh, the real idea is uh, rook h1, rook to h4, and rook to f4, fully activating the rooks. But now, after rook to h1, he's also attacking the pawn here. Uh, so best for, for Levon would be just to defend it. Uh, let's say rook to h7, and then, like we said, you bring the rook into the game. Rook h4, and if bishop to f5, rook to f4, uh, Hikaru's position would improve tremendously. But Levon, uh, as he was down on time, he went for the tricky pawn to c3, which is... Uh, just incredible and to give you an idea what Levon wanted with this c3 pawn uh probably he uh, uh if Hikaru captures it then he probably didn't want anything he probably missed that if rook captures an e3 Hikaru just goes behind the rook and wins material uh, but I think uh, what he did was uh, why he did it was a bit different because after c3 Hikaru did go for rook captures on h5 with check as it was expected I mean they're uh, playing really quickly of course you go for rook captures on h5 with check king to g6 and now he was expecting bishop captures on c3 after which of course rook captures on f3 check wins the game for Levon after g captures the rook is now undefended but Hikaru of course saw through this he played rook to c5 and now the pawn isn't really going anywhere okay it's coming to c2 but it's never touching c1 Hikaru played bishop to h1 with check or if Levon wanted to stop this he would have to give up the pass pawn so bishop h5 king to h7 and now bishop captures on f7 uh, grabbing the full rook, rook to f8, hoping to get that rook to f1 and then promote his pawn to a queen. But now Hikaru just played rook to h5, and this is now checkmate as the bishop covers these squares and the bishop covers the g7 pawn. So it's not like Levon missed mate in one or anything, he just had to try something because his position is completely lost, and then he was hoping maybe something good, good comes out of this, but nothing did.
Uh, so yeah, very nicely uh, played by Hikaru winning this um, uh, game seven. Uh, the 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 blitz section was won by Hikaru. He started by winning two games, then Lavon retaliated in the third one, but in the end, the Hikaru won the plus uh, five plus one section. Here are the the final results. Hikaru won uh, five plus one uh, with a score of five and a half to two and a half. Then the three plus one Hikaru won again with five and a half to three and a half, and the one plus one Hikaru won with four and a half to two and a half. So winning in every time format and definitely. Um, uh, a well-deserved win and if you are wondering what is next uh, in the speed chess championship um, uh, this is what's happening so Hikaru defeated Levon and he will be facing Nihal Sarin in the semi-final as uh, Nihal has defeated Ding Liren with a with a pretty uh, great score 17 to 9 and uh, in the other half of the semi-final we still have the quarter-final between Carlson and Nakam uh, Carlson and um, uh, Caruana and between Wesley Sol and Maxim Vachel Lagrave so uh, the thing that you all are wondering yes a Hikaru Magnus final uh, is still possible uh, but we'll see uh, a lot more uh, a lot more games uh, to be played by uh, by a lot of players uh, for, for that to happen uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it very nicely done by Hikaru this game was so great uh, after uh, you know after the early skirmishes where Hikaru just uh, uh, started uh, going crazy with this bishop to g4 move uh, it was uh, like you could easily have this as a classical game and you would not have time to calculate everything that's happening it's such a such a brilliant position uh, so well played by both of them but in the end Hikaru outplayed him he was faster and he uh, managed to play the position better uh, but yeah regarding the the position itself uh, like this is uh, classical chess worthy uh, we wouldn't get it because we we wouldn't uh, have this opening but you know the position itself yeah it would be great to have this in classical game as well uh, but yeah that's the game I uh, hope you guys um uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Logan Dobe, Jeff Graves, Francis Air, Benjamin Ritchie, and Timothy Rozon for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and everything else that happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.